Good morning, everyone. There's a story told about this robber, this uh, burglar breaks into a home, and in the middle of the night, he comes into the bedroom with a gun, and he points the gun towards the woman in the bedroom, and he says, what's your name? And she says, uh, my, my, my name is Elizabeth. And he says, Elizabeth, that was my mother, a blessed memory's name. I can't kill someone by the name of Elizabeth. So he turns the gun to the husband. He says, what's your name? And he's like, eh, what's your name? Finally he says, my name is Henry, but my friends call me Elizabeth. <laughs> so what's, what's in a name? In this week's Parsha, we find that Rachel gets her prayer answered. Remember, she had a first son, and she named him Yosef. Why did she name him Yosef? Because in the naming of her first child, she said, Yosef Hashem li bein achar. Yosef means add. May God add for me a second child. She immediately started praying, I should have another child. And that prayer was answered in this week's Torah portion. Indeed, Rachel gives birth to her second child. But sadly, or even tragically, she has complications during birth. And the Torah describes how during the birth, the baby's coming out of the birth canal, and the midwife says to Rachel, it's another son, it's a boy, mazel tov. But the Torah says there were complications during the birth and her soul started to expire. She started to pass out during the birth. And right before her soul expires and she dies, she says, I want to name the child Ben Oni, which means the son of my affliction. Because here I am dying in childbirth as a result of giving birth to this baby. And Jacob says, no, we're going to call him Binyamin, the son of my right hand, referring to Rachel as his main wife. And the question is, you know, God forbid, a wife is dying, giving birth, and she chooses a name for her child. Is this a time for a husband to override his wife's wish and disagree with his wife on her deathbed and say, no, 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 we're not going to go with your name, we're going to go with my name. This is her last wish. She, she gave birth to this baby. She's passing away. She wants to call the baby Benoni. Who are you to change the name? And the question really is deeper. Why did she want to call him Benoni? I mean, imagine a child has to go through life saying, I'm the son of my mother's affliction. It's a heavy load to carry in life that your mother died during your birth. There's a lot of guilt in that. Why would she want to give him that name? And Perhaps the commentaries say the answer is as follows. What she was communicating to her son was her final message. Young man, when you grow up, remember that I sacrificed my life for you to be born. You are Ben Oni, the son of my affliction. Your mother loved you so much that she risked her life and gave her life to give birth to you. And therefore, make sure you live a life worthy of that sacrifice. Make sure that I get nachas and shemayim. When I look down on you, I can be proud of my son on earth. However, Yaakov says, no, we're not going to go with Benoni. We're going to call him Binyamin. What Yaakov is reassuring Rachel is, he will be the son of my right side, meaning I will make sure to be that devoted father, to raise him in a way that he will be the apple of my eye. He will be the son of my right hand. I will always remember the sacrifice you made as a mother, the woman I loved, Rachel, more than anyone else. And I will assure you, I guarantee you that he will be the right side of my hand, meaning he will always be on my side. I will always look over him and watch over him and make sure that he goes in a way that he will fulfill your deepest wishes and your deepest prayers, that he should be the son that gives you tremendous nachas so that your sacrifice will not be in vain. And there's actually a story I once heard about, a true story about a woman who actually gave birth and during childbirth there was complications and she died. And in the olden days, this was much more often before modern medicine, where many women risked their lives just to give birth to their children. And the young man grew up, and he didn't turn out to be such a fine young man. And the father never told him, the son the circumstances of his birth, because the father didn't want him to feel such uh, guilt that he caused the passing of his mother, although not intentionally, but it, it would be extra pain and sorrow for the son. He, sh he speared him the story. Well, the kid went off to college, and he was getting terrible reports about his son. He's not studying, he's partying, he's getting into trouble. And one day, the father calls the son at college and says, I want you to come home. Why? He says, just come home, I need to talk to you. He picks the kid up at the airport, 
and instead of going home, drives straight out to the cemetery. And he walks the son into the grave of his mother and said, I need to tell you a story of how you were born. And the father proceeds to tell the son the circumstances, every detail of his birth. And then he said, I want you to look at your mother's grave and tell her that it was worth it. And this shook the boy up and turned his life around. And the truth is that as a Jewish nation, there isn't one Jew alive today who there wasn't ancestors, whether it's parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, thousands of years, who made tremendous sacrifices to stay alive as Jews and to perpetuate their Jewish faith. And therefore, every one of us, in a sense, are like Binyamin, that we have to ask ourselves, are we making our ancestors proud? Are we repaying the debt to the past? And are we passing on the promise and the gift to our future? Rabbi Hanani Ben Akasha, Amen. Let's go to Israel. 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 Let's go to Isra